Okay, we're going to get on to Edsby. So we're starting on publicboard.ca. And then we're just going to go to the staff button and hover over it. And we're going to go down to Edsby. Now, something that happens to a lot of people that I see, especially students, is they'll go down and then they'll it will just disappear on them. If that happens, don't worry about it. Just try again. Um, I find that if you go directly to staff first, you just highlight that, then it'll stick around on you. Then we're going to press Edsby. And now it's going to take you to a login page. Here, you're just going to use your login information that you use on any computer at a school and your password. So I'm going to log mine in and I'll be back in a second. Now that we've logged into Edsby, you should be looking at a page that looks similar to this. Of course, it'll have all of your information and your class information on it. In the top left corner, you can go down this and do all of your different subjects. So for this example, we're going to be doing a language arts assessment. So I'm going to click into the language arts with the left click. Once I'm there, I can see all sorts of different things I can do for language arts. For this tutorial, we're doing assessment. So I'm going to left click the assessment tab and this should pop up for you too. First thing you need to do is fill in the details of your assignment. For me, I'm going to do a paragraph and this assignment name is for both myself and the students. So it needs to be something that explains what the assignment is. So paragraph on summer break. Now, next we're going to enter a unit name. If this is your first time using Edsby, you don't have any units. And I would suggest creating a unit because it'll help you organize things later on. So we're going to do writing and we can go down to type, left click this little drop down arrow for information. And you can see all the different styles of assessment that you can use. For this one, I'm going to call it an assignment. Next, we're going to go into the expectations. This is a great feature that Edsby has. You can type in the code of the expectation if you already know it. Um, of course, I don't have them memorized, so I usually use this little pop out, this little square with an arrow pointing of it. And it takes you right into all the language arts curriculum expectations. So if I'm having my students write a paragraph, I'm going to go down to writing and we're going to go through how they're writing. So I'll pick a couple for brevity's sake. I'll just click on a couple here and you'll see they pop up up here when you click on them. And then that shows those are the selected expectations. If you click one by accident, you can just press the X and it will take it away. And once you've done an assignment with this, the next time you go into this view, there'll be a little green check mark to show you've assessed this before. And that's pretty handy as well. So you can click done once you have your expectations and you'll see they show up right here. And this helps you keep track of what you've already assessed and what you will be assessing in the future. Now, if we scroll down, you'll see it says online submission. There are a couple of selections here. Uh, you can do none if you're going to figure out another way for them to submit. File upload, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Online test and Edsby app. So if we click file upload, what's going to happen is the students will be prompted to upload a file when they go to submit. So let's say they save a document on their computer, then they'll be able to browse their computer and upload it to this assignment. And that's how they'll hand it in. Okay. Then we scroll it down and we can select a due date. So I'm, let's call it Friday, April 10th. You can select a time. You can either type it in here, 10.03. So we're at 10, or you can use the clock face and that'll give you a drop down menu, which allows you to pick whichever time you want. Next, we can go to gradings. So the purpose of the assessment is just, are you using of, for, or as. Um, you get to select that as you want. I believe right now we're doing formative assessment. And then you can do your method of assessment. So there's all sorts of uh, different options here. Uh, for this one, I'm going to say a level four plus minus. Finally, down here, it's instructions for your students. This is the message that they'll read. This is how they'll understand 
how to respond to your assignment. So I'll say, write a paragraph about your summer break. And then you can give them any further directions. You can give a sign off, write it however you want it, personalize it to your class. As we go down, if you need to attach any photos, uh, you can record a video directly from your webcam here. You can record your voice. You can upload any documents from your computer. So if you have um, you know, an assignment sheet and you don't want to type it out in the instructions for students, you can attach it here. Or you can add an app or a link. So if you need them to see a video from YouTube before they write about it, like that's their prompt to write, you can do that as well. Now, finally, we're going to go down to status. If you like to do stuff in advance, you can hide it from the students until you're ready for them to see it. If you want them to be able to see it immediately, you can put visible to students. You'll be able to go back into the assignment later and make it visible if you make it hidden at first. And then finally, cross posting. So if you'd like to also post this in Homeroom or you're running multiple courses, like you're a science teacher but you do rotary so you have multiple science classes you can click which classes you'd like to put them in so i'm also going to click this to my homeroom and then i'm going to click save now my assignment shows up on the language arts page and it also shows up on the homeroom page i hope that helped SV account make sure that they're looking at the correct page so I posted my assignment in language arts but you may post yours in a different one and they need to look and find the right page for it then you'll see my assignment that I just created so they can click into the assignment with a left click and this page should pop up here they can write a message to the teacher they can take a photograph so if you created an assignment that requires a photograph they can do that they can browse their computer for the file. So I'm going to do that. They locate the file in their computer. Mine's an example assignment. Click open and it attaches. They need to make sure that this bar on the bottom goes green to make sure that it's actually uploaded to the website. Similarly, they can also attach a link if they did it on an online document. So if we go over, I have my document, my example assignment, and they can go to share in the top right corner and they can click copy a link. Now one thing to make sure is they need to make sure the settings are correct. So if you left click here, you need to make sure that this is selected. People in Greater Essex County District School Board with the link can see it. Once that's selected, press apply left click copy link and left click copy now when your student goes back to edsbeat they can select add a video or link and they can either right click and press paste or they can press control and v at the same time once the website has recognized the sharepoint left click submit and now that's two different ways to submit their assignment. Finally, they press submit with a left click and it's in. Now that your students have submitted, you can look at it on the EdSB app. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're going to left click on Gradebook and you'll be taken to a page that looks like this. Here you can see the assignments that you've assigned and if we had more assignments, they would be running across here, just like this one. To get a nicer view, we can left click into the title and we'll see a view that looks like this. Here you can track the status. So here it says Harvey has submitted on time with the green check mark, but there are other options as well. If you want to say that it's overdue, it was received late or not done, or the student was absent when this was done, you can do that as well. You can also type in your grading schema and any comments you might have. 
If we want to look at Harvey's assignment, we can left click onto here where it says Harvey submitted paragraph on summer break. Or we can go here, click on the little paper icon and go to view submissions. When you press view submissions, you'll see the documents that Harvey uploaded. So remember, we attached a link in the last part of the video and we attached an actual document from our computer. So you can click on this part of it and it will show you a preview that looks like this. Now, sometimes these online previews don't show up as nicely as you'd want them to. So I'll show you a way that you can just download it to your computer in a little bit and it will be a little bit easier. So first, you left click on download and then your computer will download it to wherever you've selected your downloads to go. If you're not sure where that is, you can also just click on this little toolbar down here and it will launch it for you immediately.